Peter, um, you mentioned uh, clickers, student response systems in, sure. uh, in today's keynote. Um, <clears throat> We've seen a lot of growth here at William & Mary with our student response system, generally with good results uh, in terms of engagement and getting uh, participation in the classroom. Um, the, the response systems um, really embrace the use of mobile technologies, especially the cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it's a learning tool, but it's also a potential disruption. Sure. Um, and, and I know that uh, I saw a very interesting tweet of yours a uh, while recently, uh, a few uh, weeks ago, I think. Um, can you talk a little bit about the research on taking those technologies in the classroom and using them as a, uh, as a tool for learning rather than um, as a, a Taking destruction? attendance? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, clickers is one of these uh, uh, inventions, if you will. <coughs> and this happens fairly frequently where uh, version one is sort of effective, and then you move on to version two. And so it's really one of those things where I've seen enough of education to recognize that eh, it's not working great at the moment, but it's an interesting idea. And uh, so let's see where it goes. And clickers have been around for a while now. So we're on version three or four or whatever the case may be. And, and one of the developments, you know, the traditional way of doing clickers is all students have to buy a clicker. And then there's a box up front and, and they, they click and it goes into the system. And then somebody had the great idea, well, almost all students or a lot of students will have a phone in their pocket. So let's do that. The interesting thing about using your phone is you can ask different kinds of questions. If you have a clicker that only has buttons A, B, C, and D, you're limited to that kind of question. So with the phones, you have the opportunity of asking different styles of questions that then can be uh, understood by the, the software. So. Um, Big fan from that perspective, that's on the plus side. The negative side is the phone is probably the most distracting uh, device we've ever created. You know, if it's in your pocket and it buzzes, it's real hard not to pull it out and go, so who is that? That could be, you know, the president really wants me to come and solve some crisis. Um, and so it's really hard not to be distracted. And we know through the literature, simply having your phone on the table is distracting. Even if you put it off to the side and you think, hey, it's just over there, I'm not, I'm not paying attention to it. it, it distracts you. And there's research that indicates your neighbor's phone distracts you. And so that if they whip out their phone and they're, they're doing something, it's kind of hard not to look. So the literature indicates that if the person next to you is off, off task, there's a good 10 to 20% chance that's going to get you off task. So phones are good because everybody does have them, or most people have them, and you don't then have to buy them. Uh, and it can go through, for the, through your Wi-Fi system. We did some research where we were interested in um, if you're using your phone, what do you do with your phone when the teacher closes out the question? And so what we did is we put Confederates into these classrooms to basically spy on people. Uh, and we did get our hair B approval for this, by the way. So um, so we put in four, four students among the other 100 students that were in there, and they would look at four to five different people's phones. Uh, every time clickers were used, and clickers in this class were used at the beginning, mostly for a review and attendance, in the middle to uh, help people process what was going on in the class, and then at the end, uh, getting them ready to leave and giving them some closure questions. And what we did is, is uh, these confederates, we call them, uh, would watch four or five other people, and as soon as the question was closed, they would start a timer, and for the next five minutes, once a minute, they would look at everybody's phone and see what are they doing. So immediately 40% of the people were off task. And so the, it's not like they're answering the question and putting their phone down. They're, they're answering the question and they're checking their email or they're going on Facebook. That would dwindle down to, after five minutes, about 28%, which is a little bit higher than you would expect people to be on their phone anyway. The research indicates about 20% of people with cell phones in their pockets are going to be off task. Um, so getting down to 28% after five minutes, but that means it's a five minute gap where we've got students multitasking who aren't paying attention. Um, and that's every time you use them. So it could be three times during the class, you now have them off task for five minutes. So Peter, um, uh, do you have some advice for faculty members uh, of you know, some, some good practices? Because mm. this, th there are definitely pros and cons to this. Um, are there differences that we see with, uh, I don't know if you looked at laptop use versus uh, phones. Um, yeah, is, is it, that. Does it look a little bit different or? Worse. It looks worse. Yeah, yeah. so we did some, we used to did some research looking at, at what are students doing that have their laptops open. And so we spent the better part of a semester uh, sitting in classes and just looking at people's laptops. And there were times where literally 100% of the people with the laptop open were off task. Um, 
we found overall in large classes, at any given moment, 60% of the people with a laptop open are off task. And so the real question is, what were they doing yeah, on their it, phones it, and their laptops? Because so it's amazing you got that through IRB, so much respect. But yeah. what were they doing? Were they buying <laughs> shoes? Were they watching movies? Well, it, it's so funny because I have video of a guy in front of me buying shoes, literally buying okay. shoes. All right. um, I have I have seen it. You know, they, they, nice. People are watching videos, like movies. Uh, Game of Thrones was a big one there for a while. Um, sometimes they're they're just surfing. Uh, and, you know, we like to say, well, you know, they have the laptops open so they can search the web and find out extra information about class and get class resources. And um, there's a little of that, but that, you know, for 60% of the people, they're off somewhere else uh, dealing with that. And it and it fluctuates. And it also fluctuates according to when when and during the class it is. Uh, so there's, there's kind of a hump in the middle where more people are off task. And then the, near the end, they kind of get back on task. Uh, as far as advice goes... To me, this is a classroom management issue, and I don't mean that in a bad sense in an issue. It's just something to deal with. Students need to be taught how to handle their technology in the class, and so from the very first day, these are the rules of using your cell phone in class because we're going to use them as clickers. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a two minute warning to pull out your phone. I'm going to ask you the question. You're going to answer it, and then you have to put your phone away. All right. So once I close close this, you've got two minutes. You've got to get that phone away. You know, now is not the time to uh, to check your email or whatnot. You're not going to get everybody, but if you train them, and then you have to remind them each time. So remember, we're you know day two, we're going to be using the, the cell phones now. Make sure when we're done that you put it away. You don't even put it on your uh, desk, and then you can talk about the research. There's research that indicates even if it's sitting on your desk, it's distracting you. You're in this class for 50 minutes. So almost a decade ago now, uh, we ran the pilot here at William & Mary with a product that unfortunately – uh, is not to be had anymore. Uh, it had come out of Michigan. Um, and uh, it was a combination of response system, but it also shared uh, the slides and allowed students to take mm-hmm. notes. And uh, I remember being uh, a little bit of the spy at the back of the room with mm-hmm. this going on in the room with 200 students, and they stayed on task because you were able to completely leverage that device into a continuous use in the in the class um so i yeah i i and 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 i actually had an office that i had to go through the back of a lecture room uh for a little while and so i would get to see this so yeah nice yeah you you figure part of this is making it useful for the students who are in the class so if you can make it you know hey i can i can note you know create notes on on the slides as they go save that you know that that makes students happy students equate you know slides with notes for some reason, but you know, if I have the slide deck, then I've got the notes, which for, for some faculty, that's that's true, and for some faculty, there's there's a lot more value added in the stories they tell and the explanations they give and the problems they solve, and so that's that's part of the, the management of the class as well, is if they're gonna have these kinds of technologies, how do you leverage that to your advantage? 